Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of my Portsmouth Career Mode. Today this is episode 4. We've got some big games today. As I said in the last episode, we have games against Luton and Northampton, the two belows on the table. So no messing about, let's just get straight into it. So into the match against Luton Town at Kenworth Road. Obviously it's in Kenworth Road in here, but let's just assume it is. But this is a big game. Luton, I believe, are third in the table. And we need, we need to start. We need to win the games against the teams below us, not just like at the bottom end of the table, but who will be fighting with us for promotion. And Hartlepool, at the minute, is an interloper in there. Not expected to challenge for automatic promotion, but did it. But Hartlepool are in there. Luton with the same formation, mate. And it had one up from Kay McCall Smith. Obviously, we've got to watch him. Used to play in the championship, used to bag goals in for fun for Brighton. Ryan Leonard replaces Michael Doyle in midfield. I feel like this is going to be the starting lineup for a few get for from the start of this game onwards now, and let's hope we can win this one. So here on the game, we, early on in the game, we get a free kick. Carbon it whips in, but it's don't meet anyone. It's bounced all around the loose box, but it falls to Christian Burgess. He plays it to his fellow centre back Matt Clark, and it's eventually worked back to the wing. Back to Carl Bennett, he whips a good ball into the box and Vine lands there and he hits the bar. It's poor goalkeeping, he gets there before the goalkeeper, but Sally not going and the score moves no now. So here we win the ball back from Luton and we start on another attack of our own. Adam Bolt on the centre midfielder, he does well here to get past Stephen O'Donnell. He plays it through to Gary Roberts, finesse shot, he hits the ball, but Adam McGurk's there to nod it back in and we are one up inside 22 minutes. So here Christian Burgess wins the ball back from Luton, he plays it for a good forward boot to Gary Roberts, the danger man. He plays it to John Hegel, the on-loan pass to the striker. There's some good passing involved, but it's cleared by Luton, but not fully cleared, it's still bouncing around the old box. And Nathan Doyle, the centre midfielder, handballs it and the penalty is given. And it's so clear, the handball is really clear. He goes up for it and, he's, and his arm just clearly clouts the ball. Gary Roberts, you know, Norman Pantica does what he does with a penalty. He scores it and we are 2-0 up. So there it is guys, it's the end of the game, we win the game by two goals to nil. I'm sorry for it. The, those goals are the only two highlights, plus the one I hit the ball, but that, the game was that bad. Anyway, moving on to the next game against Northampton. So into our top of the table game against Northampton, they are sitting in second place, three points behind us, which makes this well the biggest game of the season so far, even bigger than the late annoying and looting games we have previously played. We beat them, so let's hope we can get another three points to get against the team pushing us all the way, not just to the title but for promotion as well. But we need as I said we need to win the games against our promotion rivals. Our starting lineup is almost is virtually the same as last game. Hugo Mo is slow from uh, that would be the team will, that will start games consecutively in the league until maybe one of them gets injured or something. And let's get into the game. The best chance of the game doesn't come until the start of the second half. Both teams are being really structured and, or, structured and organised, allowing no room for error and allowing very limited chance into the game. Northampton get a break here with the Shrewsbury Loney, James Collins cutting in. It does came for him for a packet of biscuits, but it's a great save by Brian Murphy and a potentially game-saving save, and it remain, the score remains 0-0. Our first meaningful attack starts here, just beyond the 17th minute. We move the ball on well, after Northampton had a free kick, we start to counter-attack. Jordan Hugo has been really impressive for us this season, holds off the Northampton players, plays it to Adam McGurk, who plays it to Gary Roberts, and his shot from the edge area is, is saved well by the Northampton goalkeeper. But yeah, the, the game was really limited through very few chances. Uh, the, the, it was a really good defensive performance by both teams, and they counted each other, uh, and the game did finish 0-0. So I decided to take a risk here and sim the game away to Wickham. Uh, as you know, in the last couple of FIFA games, where you have sim games, it might result in a loss maybe, or in worse, injuries and suspensions being picked up. Wickham are a very strong side and we are, and we are aware of that. Gary Roberts and Adam McGurk have done well the last couple of games, games and now they're in the top three goal scorers. This Gary Roberts there gets his seventh of the season on, in the 29th minute to put his 1-0 up. After a couple of substitutes, Wickham do get an equaliser here. Aaron and Maddie Holloway does equalise, but CD John Barty does get sent off for him, and it will be a turning point in the game because later on here, Gary Roberts would score again, 8 and a half minute, and put, get his eighth goal of the season. He's now our top scorer ahead of Adam McGurk, and it extends our lead at the top of the table. So I decided to sim our next game here at home to Stevenage. They have drawn their last three games 1 0. 
I want to set a target of remaining unbeaten at home throughout the season because I know how important it is to fans to have an unbeaten home record. Not just because they want they want to see good football from the fans, but sorry, Kieran Freeman does get sent off two yellow cards in an 18 minute spell and that's disappointing for us because he's going to be out for the next couple of games although Ben Davis is a well or right back we drop points, we draw 0-0 and Northampton are now level with us at the top of the table it's, it's disappointing to drop points in games you should be winning because you want to pick up those points to extend that lead at the top of the table and you don't want to be held back so I decided to sim our away match against Wimbledon here and we want to try and bounce back from the disappointing home draw against Stevenage because we want to try and get the best results we can at home, especially at home anyway. Adam the Goat there misses a penalty inside the third minute and that would set the tone for the rest of the game. We were just not playing up to standard at all and there five minutes before half time their big striker Tom Elliott nips in and scores and we just didn't play well at all. It was an off day for us. Ben Davis came in at right back there, as you can see, came for him. But I decided to see the rest of the game. We lose 1 0. It is our first loss of the season. And all we want to do now is get into the next game against Morecambe to try and bounce back. So, this is our next match at home to Morecambe. We want to bounce back from that disappointing defeat to Wimbledon. And we want to get our scoring form back as well because we haven't scored against Northampton Stevenage or that loss to Wimbledon at all. So, we really want to bounce back and get on the goal scoring form again to try and um, extend our lead. We are currently level on points with Northampton at the top of the table. We want to try and pull out that gap at the top of the league. I brought Adam Webster in for this match instead of Christian Burgess retaining his spot. I wanted to give Webster a go. He's a promising young player and I feel like he could, his rating could be really improved if he played a lot more. But anyway, let's get into it and hope for three points. So after a bright start, we get our we get a counter attack here, and we know we counter attack with pace. We love pace, obviously. We need pace in this league. The ball's whipped him, and it's bobbled around the Morecambe area. It's cleared the proper League Two style upfield. It comes back into the midfield for our bottom. He's been quite a good player for us this season. The only person in striker John Hugh turns and what about that for a finish? Right in the top corner. No chance of Barry Roach, Morecambe goalkeeper, and we lead by a goal to nil. Good turn, turn past the defender, and an amazing finish right into the top corner. So Morecambe start on there at the first attack of the game here. The ball is played down the wing to the veteran Kevin Ellison. He skips inside, I don't really know what Kevin Freeman's doing there. It's poor defending. He's allowed a free shot on goal, which goes wide. But that's the warning shots right there for Morecambe, and really should do better at closing him down. So into the second half here, Adam Barton gets placed the ball and Stag Sands will be up here about that in the top right corner. Uh, placed the ball to go Roberts, he cuts inside, a great swerving shot but it's saved by the Morecambe goalkeeper by Rose who actually scored against Portsmouth in real life recently. The corner's whipped in and there's Adam Webster who bought him for this game, so great header into the bottom corner. Poor marking by Morecambe, they'll take it any day, a goal will do any time. But immediately after that second goal, we regain the ball back immediately from Morecambe. And we power up field with Adam McGurk playing it to Jordan Hugo, the unknown strike from Preston. It's a fantastic shot from the edge of the area into the back of the net. I like those kind of goals where the, stri where the striker or any player just puts it right in the bottom corner and a sweet goals to score. But anyway, it's 3 0, and it looks like we found our scoring mojo at home again because we it was disappointed to not score against Northampton, then against Stevenage. So we are back on it now. So there it is, we win the game by three goals to nil. A good performance by the team. When we scored the first, when we scored the first one, we, we kicked on and we just put more pressure on Morecambe and they collapsed under it. But let's get into further games now against Newport and Oxford. So here we are into the simulated game away at Cambridge. Uh, we are level on points at the top of the table with Northampton. We are both on 31 points but we've got a better goal difference. We are four ahead of Leighton Orient who are in third on 27 points. And Luton are fourth on 26 points. Harrison Dunk gives Cambridge the lead. But Jordan Hugo, the unknown Preston man, equalises for us and he gets another one early in the second half which puts us on the front foot for this game. Um, I want to try and extend the lead over Luton who are in fourth because you know, we want to get automatic promotion, that is our aim. And, and we win 2-1 which is very good of course. 
So here we are for the FA Cup first round match away at Newport. For this game we don't make many changes. Murphy remains in goal with a back four of Davis, Clark, Webster and Stevens. Roberts has started to keep on the wing. They decided to drop Carl Bennett on his wing, give him a rest and play Gareth Evans. And Barton and Lennon make up the midfield with McGurk and Hugo playing up front. But I still think uh, an FA Cup one is really important to a team season. That's why I play a strong team to try and get through. So in the 22nd minute here we get a corner, it's floated in and it's a handball here by the XY screen man Jan Klukowski and we get a penalty. Not much really happened for the first 20 minutes until that attack we got and Gary Robert stepped up and he does what he does with a penalty and scores it and we lead 1-0. So here Newport respond with a corner of their own, Alex Robin takes it, it's put into the box but it's cleared but Matt Taylor regains it, we don't clear our lines again and it's played to Medialito and he really should score there to make it 1-1, but it doesn't, it means 0-0, but we've got to do better in defending. Now believe me, Newport did have chances, they, I think they were the better team in the first half to be honest, but I want to keep the length of the video down so that it's not too long. But we get a chance here, Gareth Evans with the shot, and it cans off a Newport defender, and we get a corner. The ex countryman Adam Barton, he whips it into the box, and it is a penalty again. It's it's the exact same incident for the first one, but this time it's Matt Partridge who has handballed it, and not Jan Klosky. Gary Roberts steps up and scores on the penalty spot, what is new. And he makes it 2-0, and it looks like we're heading through to the second round of the FA Cup. So the game against Newport did finish 2-0 and we are through to the next round of the FA Cup which is good because we want to get through to the third round and get the big Premier League sides. I want to get Southampton as I've already said but I have to wait because we've got to go through the next round first and we've got a home game here against York City. Christian Burgess just gets sent off with only 10 minutes gone but a minute later Adam Burke does pull us ahead which is good because we want to continue our good home form in a minute. But centre back getting sent off, I mean it's not the best at the minute but we have got Webster who really was in good form recently, I don't know why I didn't play him, but their fellow centre, his fellow centre back Matt Clark puts us 2-0 up in the 64th minute and that kind of runs off the game for us comfortably ahead and we win the game 2-0. So here we are at the Kassam Stadium for our game against Oxford United, they're currently in 11th place which is surprising because they've got one of the best squads in the division and I thought they'd be a lot higher. We have now pulled a two point gap out over Northampton who are in second. Hartlepool a surprise up there maybe in third on 30 points. And uh, Leighton Orient are fourth, joint fourth with Luton but only by one goal. So we are seven points clear of Hartlepool, two points clear of Northampton who are in second. And um, nine points clear of Leighton Orient who are in fourth. So the first chance of the game comes here where Brian Murphy passes it straight out to Kemal Roof and he shoots wide but a lapse in concentration there and we would have been punished if he scored. So here we get one of our first opportunities to the game where it comes from an Oxford goal kick. We win the ball back for Ender Stevens, our left back and he takes the ball from the defence and runs at the heart of the Oxford attack unchallenged. He plays it through to Adam Barton and he slots it into the back end there and we take the lead. It's one of our main first opportunities. Oxford were the better team for the first 20 minutes or so but we came back into the game and there Barton puts us 1-0 up. So Oxford start piling on the pressure here before half time. They get a corner, the ex Sheffield Wednesday man Chris Maguire here, he's involved in a lot of this at the minute. John Lundstrom, the ex Everton man, plays it back to Maguire, he puts it back in, but he is fouled on the edge of the area by Adam Webster who receives a yellow card. Uh, the danger is on here because it's near half time and we don't really want to concede before then, otherwise the game changes. The ball is back in, Brian Murphy punches it away. But look how many Oxford players there are there, there's so much space in them to create a chance. The ball is played back to lunchroom and he ups it over the bar, but the danger was there. But frankly they didn't score and that is half time. You are about to see one of the most extraordinary starts to a second half you will ever see. The ball is played down the wing to Kemal Roof. He puts the cross into the back post of Liam Circum. He plays it to Alex McDonald when he pulls a really good save out of Brian Murphy. A potential match winning save there by the ex QPR man. The corner here by Chris McGuire, the ex Sheffield Wednesday man, is taken. It's points to the box. John Lundstrom's there with the header and it hits the ball. We clear our lines. Ryan Leonard tries to get out of the box. He plays to Adam Girk and I thought that was a foul. I did, I was complaining there because it's a, 
but he's won the ball, so I'll give him the credit of the doubt. Circum there plays it to Lundstrom, and he has a shot, and it rifles off the bar again. And how lucky we are! That is just the definition of when you're on top, take your chances. And it didn't. The chances didn't. The chances did come for Oxford, but the goals didn't, and it would pay the price here. So here, off the back of those Oxford chances, we get a throw in, and we play it along the midfield quite well with Ryan Leonard playing it out to Kyle Bennett and Kyle Bennett with all his pace and trickery gets between two Oxford players and kills a shot past Sam Slocum in the Oxford goal and it makes it 2-0 to us and that is what I mean about taking your chances if you don't take chances you don't win games it's as simple as that so after that second goal we decided to bring some subs on Michael Doyle came on for Adam Barton and Mark Manorty came for Adam McGurk Jordan Hugo here has a great chance to make it 3-0 but he scuffers the chance and puts it wide and here we make a third sub where Danny Hollands comes on for Ryan Leonard so there it is full time we win the match 2-0 and it takes us more, a couple more points clear ahead of Northampton. We stay at the top of League 2. That's where we want to be. Let's get into the next match. So into the last match of the episode. We have a home game against Barnet. And they are struggling at the minute in the league. They haven't made a very good start. And we're looking to win these sort of games against the teams near the bottom of the league. We start off well with Michael Smith putting his head on 20 minutes. But John Newgill does get an injury five minutes later and he's out for like a few weeks but we'll try and get through it as well because we've got some good strikers as proven there by Mark McNulty the substitute he slams in the second and from there on we see out the game and we win the match by two goals to nil so here is the league table to end the episode we have now pulled out quite a gap on the chasing part. Northampton have now dropped back to third. They were level on points with us at one stage. But Atkinson and Dagenham, well, they would be in the bottom two, but there's no relegation to the conference on this game. We've now put a seven-point gap between us and Hartlepool, an eight-point gap between us and Northampton, and a nine-point gap between us and the playoff places, which is currently led by Leighton Orient. But anyway, that's it for today. Um, like comment subscribe please like comment and subscribe like it does it does me favors so yeah anyway be safe be champions and to loosh